honestly, this was like midsummer and mother put together. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie and today we are reading The Deloriad by Missouri Williams. This is her debut novel. I had picked this little book up. It is very little, isn't it? It was just released either this month or last month. And I've realized after trying the first couple sentences that I'm much more in the mood for some creepy, effed up, horror, post-apocalyptic nightmare that this book promises to be. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Let me briefly summarize what I know from the back of the book. This takes place after some mysterious environmental cataclysm. It is about this family that's born on incest. The leader is the matriarch um, and she sounds pretty evil just by being like the leader of some creepy post-apocalyptic incestual clan. <laughs> Her daughter Dolores is offered in marriage to someone of an opposing clan, maybe for power or some sort of political aspiration. Dolores has no legs, um, but she somehow comes back to the camp the next day, it says her reappearance triggers the breakdown of the matriarch's fragile order. It was the creepiness of the description of this book that had me interested. Also, it looks kind of cool, but also I did read the first couple pages and it's very creepy in the descriptions, very descriptive writing. There's hardly any paragraph breaks and just thumbing through this, I don't see dialogue. I see some, but it's very, small in comparison to the prose. So that makes me very excited because I love some atmospheric descriptive writing, but I'm ready to be disgusted a little bit, so. So yes, I'm going to start it now and I will check back in when I have more thoughts. I just posted this to my Instagram and I used the hashtag the DeLorean and I clicked on it to see, you know, who else had started this book. And I see this cover, which I guess is another cover that this has. Wow, look how creepy that is. I kind of wish I had that one, but this one's really cool too. Okay, I am on page 110, which is just about halfway through. Oh, this is pretty disturbing. Um, obviously I knew it was going to be, but Trigger warning, there is rape in here, and it was not pleasant to read, obviously. So yes, very upsetting, very weird, but some very interesting things besides that happening in this. First of all, the writing itself is phenomenal. It is so beautiful in a very crass and almost violent way, but at the same time, it's very poetic, and God, I cannot wait to read anything else that this author publishes, hopefully maybe a little less disturbing. The other thing about this book, it is very obvious now that this is some sort of commentary on religion. I don't know exactly what it's trying to say yet. I do have some thoughts. The imagery of the flood was the first thing that tipped me off and they keep repeating floods and water and, and things like that. But also when you think about it, the matriarch and her brother could be an Adam and Eve situation, but also this could be, you know, after the flood, in between when that rainbow happened. I don't know, I'm trying to think back on my Bible as literature class back in college, but very interesting things to say about the beginnings of this religion, because whether they want to admit it or not, the matriarch has created her own, I think I would um, classify it as a cult. It's a clan of people that follow certain practices and rituals and they have rules. So yeah, lots of stuff happening in here on that kind of level. There's also a lot of imagery on light, on discs of light. I don't exactly know what that means, but lots of descriptions of materials like glass and metal and stone. I'm such a sucker for trying to distinguish themes and trying to piece things together. Um, so that kind of reading, that annotative kind of reading is really making this read, which is very disturbing, more enjoyable. Also something I didn't realize in the book was that the matriarch hadn't known that anyone was out there. She had dreamed it. And that's something that they talk a lot about in here, about reality versus fiction versus dreams and non-reality. Because this one character who I feel is the center of this book, Agatha, she almost can read the thoughts of people around her. So I'm thinking, is that reality? Is that fiction? 
Is that something that she's just thinking herself? The only other thing I'm gonna say right now is the actual writing itself, and this is gonna sound crazy, but it reminds me of Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway, which Virginia Woolf is like trembling in her grave right now, thinking about the contents of this book, but it is told in that kind of narration of like, it jumps from one person to another. So we can be in Agatha's third person narration and she's talking to Jacob. So then it, it starts Jacob's third person narration. And then he walks over to the uncle who's actually everyone's father, but they all call him the uncle. This book is an effing handful, wow. So yeah, this book is definitely not gonna be for everyone. First of all, if you are easily disturbed and do not like disturbing content, steer clear away from this. If you're triggered by anything that I've mentioned, steer clear. But also if you don't tend to enjoy dense writing, um, this might not be the book for you as well. Because though the actual kind of impending plot is going on and it very much give you, gives you this feeling of, okay, something is about to happen. Obviously, this is not a plot-driven book. I'm hoping to read the rest of this tonight, just so I don't think this is a book that I would want to spend a lot of time on. I wanna get through it, think about it, read some reviews. So I'm hoping to get through the rest of it within the next couple hours. I finished it. I honestly don't know what to think right now. The last chapter, I have no idea what that was. Literally, maybe it's because I've stayed up late now. That went over my head because my initial instinct is to dismiss it and say that it shouldn't be in the book, but maybe it's just because I haven't really thought about it. I don't know, I'm tired. I'm glad I read this in one day though because I think I would have lost momentum dragging it out. Ultimately, I don't really know what this book is saying. Oh, something else that I forgot to say in the update before is that I do also find it interesting how much they're talking about language. And I remember in my critical theory class in college, how there is this theory that without language, we cannot think. And I remember really dragging my heels in the discussion in that class because I just refuse to believe it. And I feel like this book was really saying that language does bring ideas and thought, but also maybe evil, that it breaks innocence. So maybe that's the Adam and Eve of it all, that language is biting into the apple. I don't know. Honestly, this was like Midsummer and Mother put together. I'm not even going to try to rate this because I have no idea. I have no idea. However, I do think the writing was impeccable and beautiful. And there are so many words in this that I need to pour through and write down and figure out because, wow, this woman, Missouri Williams, has got quite the vocabulary. I'm gonna have to process this and get back to you. I'm not recommending this to anyone because it is so disturbing. <laughs> But if you happen to have clicked on this video because you did read this, please let me know your thoughts below. I think I'm gonna go um, read some reviews on it online just to read some opinions of smarter people who might know what they're talking about more than I do. All right, guys, good night. <laughs>